Hi guys, welcome back to a time lapse sort of semi tutorial video. I've spent some time drawing on Jasper here and I made a video of him and I've put a time lapse up, but I thought I'd do a little bit of an extra video for patrons and do one of my little voice over tutorial things. Not really going to be too much of a tutorial because it's sped up so it won't be real time so I won't be doing like a usual tutorial like I do. But I just thought I'd talk about what I've done on this guy here. So I've started off with the eyes as I usually do and I managed to get quite a lot of brand new colours in there. I used a lot of bright oranges, lots of bright yellows and I layered some blues and purples in there as well. The overall effect of this eye was really nice and I'm really pleased with really pleased with this portrait in general at the moment. You can see one finished eye and I think it just looks amazing. The highlight was really good. The eyes were really clear on this portrait as well. The reference photo is superb so I'm really enjoying working on this one. If you look at the pencils that I'm picking up to do the right eye there you can see a lot of light blues some purples and some oranges as well, as well as the usual dark colours like the sepias and the walnut browns to do the outer edges and the eyelids. When I'm drawing a brown dog like this, not necessarily just a spaniel but any sort of brown coloured dog, I tend to use a lot of pinky peachy colours. So I use a lot of polychromous cinnamon and the flesh tones in there because when you actually look at a brown dog like this, they have a lot of those undertones. So I generally add a lot of those colours along with really light purples and the obvious greys as well. Sometimes I add a few pinks like you saw, I just picked up a burnt sienna 10% pencil and added that on the top eyelid there. I like to add all those sorts of colours, there's so much going on in this fur, it's a real joy to draw. So doing the upper eye socket here, the shadow on his eyebrows, that was really simple, straightforward, I just layered down some greys, went over with some walnut brown in the polychromos, dark sepia and then added a few splashes of purple here and there. A little bit of orange for a little bit of undertone as well. But in the highlights is where it really gets interesting on this piece because I use a lot of light mauves and light pinks and that's what really creates the highlight and what I think creates this piece. So as always when I'm drawing this dog, I'm always paying attention to my reference photo and the hair direction. That's absolutely vital, especially when I'm working from a really good clear photograph like this one of Jasper here. It's just really nice to work from, you can see every single hair, which direction it's going, what colours are where, it's just so simple and nice. So you can see again I'm adding some different colours to all of the brown fur and the highlights there, some oranges, some pinks and some purples. The purple that I like to use a lot of in this one is Periwinkle Blue which is a Pablo pencil. It's not necessarily classed as purple but it comes out a really nice purpley blue and it's really good for the highlights on this piece. When I'm doing the underlayers, so the base layers which are the warm greys, one, two and three, I'm also adding in some cold greys in there because on brown dogs like this you tend to get a mixture of the two so I'm just adding the two together to create a nice overall tone. Again doing the bottom eyelid, lots of pinks in there, love the flesh tones of the polychromos, a little bit of um, I think it's um, rose in the Pablo, I'm pretty sure it's rose, I can't remember off the top of my head, but lots and lots of light pinks in there. There's lots of orange tones in his fur in certain places, so you can see by the left of that left eye there's quite a bright orange patch, and that's a really nice tone to add. It's, it gives a really nice hint of light and structure on his face. We're moving to the centre bit here and this middle bit is all highlights so you can see all of the light pinks and purples I'm picking up. Lots and lots of flesh tones. And then I'm adding in all of the dark hairs first with this so I know exactly where they're going, mapping them out. Then I'm going in with my mid 
colours, so my mid ranges like the dusky pinks and some raw umber um, and some oranges as well, some raw sienna and then adding in my mid tones and then going back over with my dark tones over the top of that. You can see slowly building up the layers it does take quite a while. I think all in all the recording of this piece so far to where it ends, which is where I just get to do above the nose, I think I've spent about five hours so far on him. So you can see the process of layering, you've got your light colours and then you slowly layer up to your dark colours. It all takes time and you can kind of see it slowly building here. I haven't actually used any embossing tools or any kind of fancy equipment on this piece so far. I wanted to try and do it myself because I had a really nice reference and I could see all the hairs and I could map them out nicely so I just tried to recreate all of the hairs especially where the nose hair, muzzle hair meets the eyes and it kind of goes in a different direction to the eye hair. I wanted to try and do that myself and I think I've successfully pulled that off so I was really happy with that. I'm adding the same sort of colours into the muzzle hair, lots of pinks and purples and then using my mid colours, the oranges. I think I used Sanguine a lot, um, both the Polychromos and also the Pablo pencil. And I used quite a lot of russet colours, Caput Mortem and Violet and Cat Caput Mortem from the Polychromos. And especially Burnt Sienna 10%, that pencil was really really good for this portrait along with the light violet polychromos. I'm just going to have a little look in my drawers here because there's a colour that I've been using, it's a luminance pencil and it's the ultramarine violet which is number 630. I've used that a lot in the highlights. That's what really creates that aspect of light in there. Another favourite pencil on this was the cream pablo and also the buff titanium luminance pencil. All of the white areas on Jasper's face, I've actually left the white of the paper this time. I haven't added any sort of white pencil down before. I've just left the space and then left the white of the paper and then shaded the highlight in the eyes there. All of the areas around the eyebrows, the highlights around there, they are all shaded with warm greys and cool greys and then the pinks and the purples on there as well. And then all the subsequent colours laid up around it. I used a touch of black here and there as well, as well as the dark sepia, but at the moment there aren't very many dark patches on Jasper for me to actually draw, so I've just left them blank. And I'm coming to the end here now, so I'm just going to wrap up the little voiceover. Hopefully this has given you some sort of insight into Jasper so far, and I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Bye!